Hello guys. As you can see on the bench today we have a brand new Raspberry Pi 4 model B 1GB and we are going to do something very interesting with it. I am going to turn it on quickly just to confirm that it is the 1GB version, and then we will proceed with the main focus of the video where I will show you how to upgrade your Raspberry Pi 4 RAM by physically changing the memory chip that is soldered on the board. The tools I am going to be using are a hot air station, micro soldering iron, a microscope, a pair of tweezers, and a board holder. Also needed are soldering flux, leaded solder, solder wick, isopropyl alcohol, and Kapton tape. The procedure itself is very straightforward. This upgrade can be done on every model of Raspberry Pi 4 including the Raspberry Pi keyboard, not only on the Model B and it doesn't require messing with the software at any point. Literally what you need to do is just swap the memory chip with one of the supported bigger chips. In the description of the video, I will list the codes of the supported memory chips. This is the new 8GB chip we are going to solder. As you can see the chip comes with solder balls so we don't need to worry about reballing it. Although I reballed it off camera so I can be sure that the solder is leaded and so I can use a lower soldering temperature. Since we are going to apply hot air the first thing we need to do is mask off the surrounding chips and especially the plastic connectors so they don't melt straight away. Here I am using Kapton tape to isolate the area around the RAM chip. You can also use a different type of tape for this job, like for example aluminum tape. It doesn't really matter as long as it is doing a good job of isolating from the hot air. Now I am securing it to my board holder so the board doesn't move while I am working on it. Believe me, this makes your life so much easier. After applying some flux to the chip perimeter, we first set the hot air station to 240 degrees and 60% airflow to warm up the board a little bit, and then we turn up the temperature to 400 degrees to desolder the memory chip. Be careful when desoldering the original chip since they use unleaded solder that is harder to melt than regular or leaded solder and if the solder isn't completely molten when you pull on the chip the chances of you ripping some of the pads off are very high. So make sure the solder is molten before pulling on the chip. A good way of telling if the chip is ready to come off is by nudging in ever so slightly and if it moves and then springs back to its position it means that the solder is molten and you can safely pull on it. After removing the chip we need to replace or at least dilute the unleaded solder to make our life easier. The way we do this is simple. First, we apply a little more flux and use a soldering iron set to 360 degrees to make and drag a solder blob above the pads on the board. It is important to be gentle and to go slow to avoid ripping pads in the process. Then we will use some solder wick to wipe the solder from the pads so they are nice and flat. Please apply as little pressure as possible when cleaning the board with the solder wick to avoid damage to the pads. Cleaning all of the solder from the pads is crucial to properly soldering the new chip in place. Even one pad with enough solder left on it could lift the chip in a way that fails to make proper contact with other pads. As you can see the flux now looks a little burned already, so what I like to do now is just wipe it with 99% isopropyl alcohol so it is clean and ready for us to apply fresh flux and begin soldering the new memory chip. Also when I cleaned the old flux I saw a few spots that needed to be cleaned a little more so I did that. This upgrade may have been pointless in the past when the prices of Raspberry Pi models were normal, but nowadays this is the cheapest way to get your hands on the 8GB version. In Europe, it is next to impossible to find Raspberry Pis in stock at authorized resellers so the only option you have is the heavily overpriced second-hand market. If you have the equipment and the experience it can be a fun little DIY project. If you can't or don't want to do it yourself, you can always pay a professional to do it for you and again it may be the cheaper option. There I see that one piece of the tape interferes with the chip so I quickly change the tape.
Now we need to do our best to align the chip with the pads on the board and that is probably the hardest part of this upgrade because the outline on the silk screen is a lot bigger than the chip itself so we need to make sure the distance at the opposing sides of the chip to the outline is the same, that way we would know that the chip is where it is supposed to be. After we are confident that the chip sits where it should be we set the hot air station to 360 degrees and 40% airflow so the chip doesn't fly away. The soldering can take some time and the question here is how we know when the solder is fully melted or when to stop heating. So one way is to lock your eyes on one specific spot of the chip so you can see when the chip sits in place, but this can be hard to do in some cases. The other option is to nudge the chip ever so slightly from time to time and when it springs back you know that the solder is completely molten and you can stop heating. Then we need to let the board cool down before plugging it in to avoid damaging it. Also, don't try cooling it too fast for example by pouring alcohol on it or dipping it in alcohol because this too may lead to damaging the board. I like to just place it in my fume extractor inlet so it cools fast and even. After around 5 minutes the board has cooled down to room temperature and can be safely powered on. And finally comes the moment of truth. Plugging it in for the first time to see if it is going to boot or not. At this stage, if the board doesn't display anything when plugged in, most likely the RAM chip isn't properly soldered so you are going to need to desolder it, reball it, and put it back on the board again. And yes it is working. The only thing left to do is run a memory test to confirm that everything is alright. For this. I am using the Memtester program, which for some reason only wanted to test 2GB at a time so I ran two tests simultaneously for a total of 4GB being tested just because this is a very CPU intensive task and I don't want to overload the Pi and I was shocked how much time was needed to complete the RAM test almost an hour. One hour later. And there are the results everything is okay. If you made it this far you are awesome, thank you for watching. I really hope this video was helpful to you. If you have a suggestion for the next video or you have some questions write them in the comments. I make sure to read all the comments under my videos. Till the next time, bye.